We can now check our results to ensure that our simulation makes sense. While we do not have experimental data to validate that we solved the correct mathematical model, we can verify our results by investigating whether we solved the selected mathematical model correctly. Firstly, it is good to ensure that the boundary conditions were applied correctly by sampling the values along the boundaries. Looking at the total temperature and pressure plots, we can see that the values at the inlet match what is specified in pre-analysis. In this case, it is approximately conserved over the full domain. Furthermore, the static pressure at the outlet matches the boundary conditions as well. This is a little less clear directly from this image, so I encourage you to check this for yourself. While it is difficult to directly verify that the wall and axis boundary conditions were satisfied, the velocity vectors provide reasonable certainty that the velocity at the curved edge does not penetrate the boundary and that the velocity is one-dimensional near the symmetry axis. Next, we can compare our results to hand calculations to verify the solution. We took a look at this in the numerical results step and compared the Mach number variation along the outer edge and the symmetry axis to the results for the analytical case. This is a good method of determining if our simulation was performed correctly, as well as helping to identify the impact of different assumptions in our mathematical model. Finally, we can work to determine and reduce the numerical errors in our solution process. This can be addressed in two ways. Firstly, the convergence criteria can be reduced so that the solver runs for more iterations. This reduces the linearization error and will help the results converge further. This can be accomplished by changing the residual value at which the iteration stop to a smaller number. Here, we had it set to 10 to the negative 6, but this can be reduced further. Secondly, the mesh can be refined to contain more elements. This means that the solver will find values of the primary unknowns at more points in the flow domain, and the discretization error will be reduced. This can be easily achieved by reducing the element size in the meshing step. Since our convergence criteria was already fairly small, this is likely to have a larger effect in reducing errors. And this will likely be visible in the total temperature and total pressure plots, with the non-uniformities near the exit shrinking in size and magnitude. Here's a comparison of the original mesh with an example of a refined mesh. By simply halving the element sizing, the mesh contains nearly quadruple the elements. This will reduce the discretization error significantly and can be used to verify if the solution is approximately independent of mesh size. I encourage you to go through these steps by yourself to verify and improve the solution results.